Okay, I had a comment <laughs> there uh, on a video I did yesterday. And somebody said, let's see, for your information, contrary to what people think, it's a federal crime to have foreign currency, now especially Russian money, within the U.S. without declaring it. That's not true. Uh, perfectly legal to possess foreign currency. Um, actually, it's perfectly legal to use foreign currency in trade if both parties are accepting of it. You know, like you could use uh, pesos or Swiss francs or what, you know, doesn't really matter. Uh, it's a little touchy, you know, you're bringing a whole bunch into the country. You know, there would be questions at customs, you know, and I think you would have to declare it. But you can certainly possess as much as you want, and you can, like I say, use it in trade if both parties are willing. You know, it's not unusual uh, for like euros to turn up in change here. I've had euros, I've had pesos. Uh, used to be years ago, uh, we would commonly get a lot of Canadian change. Uh, and it used to be, it was used here as on par with American money. You know, it made no difference. Canadian quarter was as good as an American quarter. It didn't really matter. Uh, eventually, it got to the point where the Canadian quarter was only worth 20 cents. Well, uh, then they started cracking down on that and, and sorting it out in the banks before you get it. But still, Canadian turns up fairly often. But it's not unusual to run into to odd currency. You know, if you bring in a bunch of change and run it to one of them change machines, you're always surprised what gets kicked back out. You know, that uh, the sorting doesn't <laughs> like a certain thing. But I was going to mention, you know, like say, well, this is an Eisenhower dollar. These are the Susan B. Anthony, which never flew because they're way too close in size to a quarter. I mean, you have to really look at them. And then my keys. Now, I like those, and I use them a lot. The problem is that you don't often get them back in change. Um, I used to like them when I was doing shows, selling rugs. I would use them in my change instead of having a whole pile of $1 bills. You know, it's a lot easier to use a coin. So I use them all the time. Um, they're excellent for like tipping and that sort of thing. They're just a, a handy thing. The problem is there are countries in South America that have adopted our dollar as their currency. They don't like the paper dollar. They prefer to have these coins. So most of the coins that are in circulation eventually end up down there. You know, well, I can see it, you know. But like I say, it doesn't really matter what you're using for a currency. We could use rubles here. If a store will accept rubles, you could use rubles here. You know, it all depends on what you want to use. You could use monopoly money, though the counterfeiting problem would be huge. Uh, you know, like this stuff is nothing but monopoly money. It's used, well, actually the, the, the main <laughs> currency that's used in illegal transactions in drug deals all over the world is American hundred dollar bills. And a rather large portion of them are counterfeit. You know, that's a constant problem that they don't like to talk about, but they're all over, which is why you know, now every time you go into a store with a hundred dollar bill, or even in many instances a twenty, they always have to run that pen over them and check them out. But it doesn't matter what you use, you know, like here. Come here. 
Yeah, I was trying to catch a cat. There's a cat hanging around here. I was going to show you. You could trade, you know, if you want to do trading cats, you could do trading cats. I'd be a wealthy man. Chickens, you could do trading chickens. So much whatever the parties are agreeable to. You are not required to use the American dollar in the United States. You know, it's just a Federal Reserve thing, and it's the preferred currency that they recommend, but you don't have to use it. You could use, you know, like, it used to be a lot of people, like, say, if you were ordering something through the mail, not supposed to send cash, but then they, people were sending postage stamps as currency. So a lot of companies ended up saying, it required, you can't send stamps. <laughs> here, here, here's a cat. See, there it, whoop, whoop, there it cat was. Cat doesn't want to be used for trade. <laughs> but it really doesn't matter. There's no intrinsic value to the money. Uh, it's all nothing but promises. I always, I was impressed when they talked about making the great Islamic Caliphate. Uh, they came out with their proposed coinage. And that was going to have intrinsic value. It was gold and platinum and silver. You know, sounds great to me. You know, it makes a lot of sense. But who? They don't do that. You know. But there is nothing saying that you cannot have uh, foreign currency. You know, if I could get YouTube to pay me in rubles, I'd be tickled but I don't think they want to go along with it. <laughs> but, you know, it is. It's just whatever you agree on in trade. It, it has, there is no requirement to have to trade in dollars. It just gets complicated if you don't. You know, some people do it because it's simple, but it is not illegal to possess foreign currency. That's the problem with comments. You know, all you gotta do is, is just Google it. Is it illegal to possess foreign currency? No. No, it, it's really simple. But yet people look at it and think, oh my God, I can't have, you know, I can't have euros in the US and I can't have, you know, it, it, like I say, pesos turn up all the time. It's not unusual. But, like I say, the Canadian currency that we used to get, we don't get as much of that anymore. But it used to be incredibly common. Uh, it got to be a problem because as the, the like pop machines and wash machines and laundromats, as they got uh, more refined on what they would take as coins, they started jamming up with the Canadian ones. You know, they were enough different that they would screw the machines up. So they gradually, you know, kept pulling them out of circulation. Otherwise, it was just taken at par value. But even, like, say, over ordering things online, uh, just the other day I ordered some parts, motorcycle parts from England. Well, the transaction had to be dealt with in pounds. Now, <laughs> that got complicated because they had to do a, you know, exchange and uh, to this day I'm not exactly sure what those parts cost me but the parts came you know but it's not unusual it's just convenient to deal in dollars but you know if if a state or a city decides they want to have their own currency there's nothing prohibiting it you know, just if you're dealing with the federal government, they, they want to deal in dollars. Well, and <laughs> increasingly, it's digital dollars. They don't like the paper money. Like I say, I like coins, but I would prefer that <laughs> they weren't made out of, you know, Pot metal, I'd like to have intrinsic value to them because there's nothing behind this stuff. Um, 
that's where, like the ruble, now uh, there's stuff behind the ruble. You know, like I say, uh, Russia for years has been buying up gold. Though we tried to seize a whole bunch of their gold. You know, we love to do that. But their currency is backed by gold and commodities. You know, ours is packed, <laughs> backed by promises. I don't trust promises. <laughs>